<laughs> Yo, the, this microphone is going to pick up the squelch of my butt cheeks against this chair. Nice. This movie's going to flop. Our mind's about to pop. But enough of that noise. Time for the B-roll, boys. Welcome to another sopping wet episode of B-Roll Boys. This week we take a dive into 1995's post-apocalyptic sci-fi adventure epic, Waterworld. That had quite the budget. (laughs) I'm your host this week, Wes, and I'm joined by my coastal co-hosts, Justin. Yo! And Harlan. (laughs) Yar, she blows. Uh, Was that enough... Enough water. Things. I'm actually impressed, dude. That was great. <laughs> that was, a, that was quite an aquatic that. episode. Coastal co host. I love it. Uh, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so, I mean, fuck, where do we start? It's, a, it's We're in the world. I've never There's heard water. the word atoll used more in any context in or, this movie. Or at all. Like, I heard it in school. You're going you're gonna to atoll. Yeah, I don't know. They they did say like three or four times. Yeah, it was like a thing I learned in geography and then never used ever. Well, maybe you would if you're trying to find dryland. What what does True. that mean? A toll. I don't, I'm not familiar. In, uh, enlighten me. Educate me. This is an educational podcast now. All right. Yeah. I hate that I took the same classes like 50 times in school and I kind of barely remember what an atoll is. I think it's like a. I don't fucking know. I don't remember what it's all this. <laughs> you just noticed they said it a lot? <laughs> I know it's got a something plus. to do with aquatic. All right, uh, I'm going to be that okay, guy. Okay, in the meantime. Hey, well, hey, Wes. What, hey. Did, what did the Atlantic Ocean say to the Pacific? What's that? Nothing. It just waved. An atoll is Dude. a ring-shaped reef, island, or chain of islands formed of coral. Well, don't worry about the coral thing. You interrupted my laugh track. Not cool. The atoll looked like Nuketown from Fallout. Yes. Okay, yeah. so Waterworld. So... <laughs> Um, this is considered one of the biggest Hollywood flops, like, ever, which, I don't know if I agree. Like, I think it's the most famous one, but, like, it actually made more money than its budget worldwide, so I don't really know, like... Maybe it's kind of, like, because I would have been all, like, two years old in 1995, but maybe it was, uh, what I understand about this set, this movie was extremely hyped, so maybe yeah. it was like a bust relative to expectations mm. because this would have been pitched as like the avatar of that time. Yeah, I guess so. And then Titanic came along two years later and actually lived up to those promises. And then so. Titanic came around and then sank it. <laughs> huh? Dude. Waterworld walks a Titanic could run. <laughs> <laughs> so it could yeet into a fucking iceberg. Yeah. So it could yeet a child into the ocean. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I guess we should uh, <clears throat> dive into this. <laughs> Sorry, we'll stop eventually. Um, so, so yeah, like pretty much all of our episodes, there's not like a super detailed plot. He basically goes to a place, people make him go to another place, and then they get there. So it's kind of just like well, you know, the friends we meet along the way. No, yeah, yeah. It's supposed um, to be about the spectacle. Yeah, pretty Yeah, much. which there's not a lot of. But if, if it wasn't obvious from the name, this is about a, a world of water. It's basically like... A timeline in which Team Aqua, you know, succeeded. So <laughs> everything's all all sunky dunk. It's a really well thought out plan by them. Yeah. Yeah. So in the future, the global ice caps melt, and then it covers the world in water. I do like that they left it kind of ambiguous. Like it could be at any point. Uh, There's like that. the ancient ones must have fucked the world up, and well, now it was, uh, it was 2017. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm yeah. I'm glad they didn't put like uh, a specific like year because. They at least, like, show that the protagonist has, like, gills and, and um, like, you know, like, extra webbed feet. So it's at least long enough for, like, you know, a little bit of evolution to, to start doing its thing. Like an like after Earth? Yeah. Where the world evolves to kill you in a thousand years? <laughs> I mean, realistically, how far in the future do you think this is? Maybe, like, four or five hundred years? I was thinking well, a couple it, hundred. Maybe it's closer to 2199. Okay, so so not accounting for, for the evolution taking <laughs> place? That. Yeah, I'd say it's like like 400 years or so, something like that. I don't know. How long would it take for you to just kind of start growing gills and webbed feet and all that? Like several million years? Yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, there's... Just about the timeline, there's things that doesn't make sense because there's like an entire gang in this movie that's just constantly like chain smoking cigarettes yeah. and they're riding jet skis around like constantly. I, I actually don't think this movie is like 
as horrible as I expected it to be. I thought this was going to be like a lot more bombastically terrible, but yeah, it's just same. like a lot of little stupid details. And like the second you start thinking about the logistics and logic of the world, it doesn't make sense. And then at the end, the plot falls apart. Yeah, I, I will say almost all of the notes that I wrote down for this are questions about like, where did they get this? How did they do that? In a yeah. society entirely revolving around water where dirt is so, it's basically worth its weight in gold. How do you have this many uh, like people smoking cigarettes? Or I'm assuming they're just it's like actual tobacco. No, yeah, they look like brand new like cigarettes. Packaged like packaged cigarettes, yeah. Yeah, and like like you said, like they they ride how do you like do anything. They ride jet skis around and shit, and like yeah, like they like say I was like, how do they fuel that? And they say like, oh, we use gas. But I'm like, okay, where would you get the gas? Like, well, it's from the uh, Exxon ship. Okay, but that seems like it wouldn't have enough to like supply them long term for hundreds know? of years yeah. <laughs> i don't know i don't think it's supposed to be hundreds of years i just think that these particular goons found it and have probably been feeding off it for the last couple of years they call it go juice which is pretty great i'm gonna start calling <laughs> gas go juice <laughs> <laughs> yeah they never actually call it gas it's always go juice which mm. is and for solid. some reason there's this dude that just like lives in the oil tank <laughs> Yeah, like, what's he doing down there? Like, this old have to hollow stir guy that just, like, hangs out there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, when eventually he gets he gets bloated up at the end of the movie, he's like, oh, thank God, when he sees himself about to die. And I guess he'd been down there a long time, but, like, what was he eating? Also, is it gas or is it crude oil? Because crude oil, you can't just put that in, like, a car and have it work. It has to be refined. Maybe they're refining it. But how? I don't know. I guess, but how is like the central yeah. question to <laughs> yeah. everything in this it's movie like, because nothing makes any fucking sense. Because yeah. every five seconds they're doing it, but how? Ironically, the thing that <laughs> made the most sense to me was at the be- the very first shot where Kevin Costner pisses into this like weird filtration thing and uh, just it filters through to where he can actually drink his water or drink his piss water. Hell yeah! Would you that drink that made piss the most water? sense to me out of everything. Yeah, the opening shot. I, mean, like, I, f- I forgot this movie opens directly with piss. I love it. What, yeah. Like, why? <laughs> Sets the tone. You'd think <laughs> with, like, how rare all, just all resources in general are, you'd think that there would be a lot less clean-shaven people in this movie, because there's, like, there's quite a lack of beards, you know? That's because everyone's got, like, static X hair. <laughs> well, they probably, they look like... like, gas station crackheads. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they probably found a way to do it or something because I mean if they're just like living on the high seas constantly if the earth is warm enough for everything to like melt it'd probably be pretty hot they wouldn't want beards right? I'd say you can get a straight razor yeah I mean I guess like I that know. I could see I don't understand how they're getting cigarettes I don't understand how like you just have random plants in a world this destitute of resources how does like anything function yeah. yeah, it's like every store or whatever, like he comes across in the movie, they're holding key items for him to buy since, he, <laughs> since he's the main character. It's like, okay, you can grow tomatoes now because he bought a tomato plant, but I they mean, only had one of them. <laughs> I mean, it starts off that he's going to this like little colony shantytown type place. It gave me kind of Pirates of the Caribbean vibes a little bit. Yeah, because he cause pisses, he... then just goes there immediately to just chill, I guess. Well, he goes there to sell dirt so he can like raid all of their loot. So he's getting like a million things and shelves and a fucking tomato plant somehow. Uh, again, with so little, little like usable dirt. I mean, it's revealed later he's going on. So Kevin Costner is this like hybrid fish creature. They keep saying Whoa. that he's like a non-human, but he's just a guy with gills. Yeah, he's just a normal dude with gills and like slightly webbed feet. They called where him mutant like once. Where did they get the fucking dirt that he has in the first place? Because like he's never been to dry land. Which is like, you know, the objective is to like find the, the fable. Well, he's been land. to the fake dry land. It was when he went time. underwater. It, it seems like his, his whole thing that he's been doing before the movie was like he goes there, gets dirt, and then like dries it out, then takes it to a new water town and like buys all their shit up, I guess. It's mm-hmm. like proto crypt, like Bitcoin So he like found mining. a way to farm gold. And yeah, just, he's, he's basically a wild gold farmer. He just ruined the economy. He's Bitcoin mining. Actually, yeah. He's no, just a shitty MMO player. That's how it works. That's no why he's a guy. dick. You know, you just, like, find some shit, farm it, and just ruin the economy and just fucking plunge it into the ground. Hey, what's up, RuneScape? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's his whole drip, I guess, as he goes and harvests dirt. His from drip. His... That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's got, like, a whole bunch of, like, uh, 
Jack Sparrow braids and Hanafuda earrings to like hide his gills, I guess, behind his ears. Yeah, and the and then they just he like tosses his hair back and they see him anyway. It's like, hey, you're a mutant, mutie, <laughs> mutie. Well, sorry, we can't say the M word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's at that town. They see he's a mutant, and then just all hell breaks loose for like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, everyone just wants him dead. Or it to, seems like, very irrelevant shit. to the rest of the movie. I'd completely forgotten about it until just now. Yeah, because it never really comes into play until he swims down there and shows her where he was getting the dirt. And what, then... that he's a mutant? Yeah. I feel like that's the entire crux of the second half. He's able to do half the shit because he's a mutant. Like, there's a lot of different plot points that happen because of that. Like, him being able to breathe air into this other chick's Well, I, I meant more more so, like, his, his uh, being persecuted for being a mutant. Yeah. Oh. That doesn't well, really I, I seem I figure that's just why everyone wants him dead on sight. I don't know. You'd think that, that they'd be like, oh, dude, you're, you're based as fuck. You can help us out, you know? Like... <laughs> no, they just want to steal his shit. Yeah. Like, he should have been, like, Namor and... Just came in and fucked their bitches. (laughs) There was one great scene where he just like propelled through the water and just shot up out of the water and just like landed on the deck. And there's another great scene where he just dives head first with his hands on his waist into the water. He just kind of, it looks like he trips. Yeah, he just (laughs) falls into the water. He's like, I meant to do that. He looks like the about to head out kind of. Well, so should we talk about like the the plot and like the objective a little bit? Um, Yeah, so... It's an it's an escort mission. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Sort of. So when he gets captured as a mutant, like the leader is like, okay, don't don't just kill him. You know, we'll sink him into the mud and like turn him into mulch for our plants or whatever. Because apparently, whenever anyone dies in this colony, they just like recycle them. Pretty much. That makes sense. Soil and green as people. Yeah, <laughs> they soil and green him. Um, and then so the he's shit sink- water. Everything hits the fan. The smokers attack, which is like the antagonist of the movie. The guys that have all the gas. They're like the Mad Max gang of the movie. This really is just... I know this yeah. is like the easiest ever comparison to make, but this is Mad Max on water. There's a reason no, why there's everyone no better says that. description for it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, like, I know it's, it's not a, like a super hot take. No, it's inevitable. Yeah. Like, there's no better way to describe it than that. So they have like an execution like cage, and they're lowering him down into the mud. Then the smokers like attack the town luckily you know right when he's being executed and then his cage is like going into the mud and then um what, what's her name what's that character's name did she even have a name like half the characters don't even have like real names uh, the little girl had a name the little girl's in nola i don't know what the older one's name was it was a the, woman like, that found this child mo- surrogate mother yeah she's type. like i'll let you out of this cage if we can come with you and he's like let's, yeah of let's, course let's call her mommy for yeah, lack mommy. of a better sure. better name okay so mommy comes up to his cage. <laughs> yeah. Mommy can let you out. <laughs> <laughs> and she even she says something like, "If I let you out, you're taking us with you." And he goes, "Sure, sure." It's like either that or die in ten seconds. <laughs> He's like, "I'm totally not lying about that." <laughs> yeah. So her deal is that she found a kid floating in a basket, and she's got like tattoos on her back, and everyone's trying to figure out what it means. Everyone seems to think that it's a map to dryland but no one ever actually figures out like how to read it i don't feel like we get enough a good enough look at it to know what it's supposed to be because it just looks like a compass or something yeah, it looks like a blackout tattoo like she's got a big black circle on her back it's like yeah, a black like, circle with some kind of symbol in it but i, I just we, yeah we never get a very clear look at it but like it's, it never lingers on it for long enough for us to know what it is yeah and and no one's um no one yeah like you said no one's ever able to like figure it out until the end of the movie like just this dude named gregory i think was his name shows gregor. up gregor sorry um and uh he reminds me of radagast from the hobbit movies <laughs> and he just like you know the the conflict's over and he looks at it and he like immediately knows how to read it he's like oh yeah sure felt very convenient to me you always need like a kooky old decker kane type in your movies <laughs> to like bring out that wisdom yeah it was just kind of weird and high as shit the whole time. But yeah, um, after they pick those two up, or after he picks those two up, like he's just kind of a dick for like half an hour. Yeah, he's a fucking asshole. I don't know why they like, like him. The kid's getting into shit. So, like they go down below his deck in his boat, and he, they see all kinds of like old world stuff, like crayons and stuff. And like the little girl starts drawing. 
It's like, I did this for you. And he's like, almost fucking beats her to death. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like this double-edged sword of like, they're really annoying, but he's also a prick. Yeah. So I can't latch onto any of these characters because they're all just really unlikable. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, and, they don't justify each other's behavior. Like, he's too much of a dick and they're too annoying. Yeah. yeah. Like, and <laughs> of course, of course, by the end of the movie, like, they're a family and they all care for each other. But like, there's nothing that happens along the way that makes me believe that they grew like from like hating each other to like you know being homies they're, not that like, really weird teaching her how to swim scene <laughs> you no. don't think that <laughs> yeah harlan oh yeah that, that big really old oh, I'd, oh for yeah that. i'd forgotten yeah the, there's a really romantic part where yeah like the little girl um can't swim because and we find that out because he like he gets mad at her and he just yeets her off the boat <laughs> And leaves her behind. So yeah, it's like you talk too much and just throws her into the ocean. <laughs> it's fucking and, great. And his act of kindness, his resolution of char- his character arc through that scene is that he stopped the boat for her after he's the one that threw her in and she can't swim. Yeah. How a girl is able to somehow live in this world of entirely water, not being able to swim, I don't know. Yeah, she's like ten. Okay. By the way. I'd yeah, say. she she reminds me of little Anakin, especially oh. when oh yeah, he cuts their hair. Like, yeah. forcibly cuts their hair, which is really weird. Yeah, he got, gets mad at them and just, like, chops their hair off with a machete. Yeah, like, that it's was a, an uncomfortable There's scene. a whole bunch of, like, awkward things like that that happen where you're just kind of like, what the fuck? I think he might have cut <laughs> like their hair just to make time. them, like, better swimmers, you know? Like, if you have less hair, it, you know, you're not dragged down as much in the water. Well, Michael Phelps, like, what are they doing? <laughs> so I, I don't think so. I think he was just trying to be a prick to them. A little bit of both. Well, because, yeah, he cut, like... Uh, mommy's hair off. <laughs> yeah, he like pins and, her down and slashes it around like Zorro. <laughs> yeah, and then the little girl, Renola, starts like giving him shit again and then he does it to her too. Yeah, and then it's she looks weird. like Jake Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. She does look like Jake Lloyd. It does look like shit. <laughs> that might He's be the gr- best part of the movie, right? He's great. Dennis Hopper's fun in this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the leader of the smoker gang so that's kind of a semi cool concept i guess he's like he has a whole bunch of people living on this giant cargo ship and at the very end there's a reveal that was an exxon cargo ship so that's why they have all the gas and shit but like he's basically saying he's going to lead all these people to to dry land and he has like a whole team of rowers that go down and like okay we're going to find it this time go this direction but it actually shows that the boat doesn't go anywhere and like his underlings are like they're gonna find out one day man we're not even moving <laughs> it's like it's kind of ingenious i'd say that's, that's kind of uh, on the nose for uh some some current events yeah. honestly you th- you'd think uh you'd hope that maybe somebody would be smart enough to like look at the constellations and be like wait a minute <laughs> well, yeah. Waterworld predicted the trump presidency <laughs> Yeah, so the leader's name is Deacon, and earlier in the movie, a mariner, which is what they call Kevin Costner's character, Uh because no one has any fucking names in this movie. Yeah. Um, He loses his eye because of him. I am Jack's webbed feet. And, like, maybe the best scene in the movie is, like, when they're trying to make him, like, a fake eye, (laughs) and, like, they put it in, he's like, okay, how does it look? How does it look? And everyone's like, oh, yeah, it looks great, great. boss. No no problem, boss. He's like, you... How does it really look? And this like little kid is like, looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls up a mirror. He's like, it does look like shit. <laughs> that might be the best scene. Obviously, this came out way before, but it, it reminded me a lot of that that uh, episode of It's Always Sunny, where the McPoyles get the eye patch and they like just, or it's just a band aid over his missing eye, and they draw an eye on it, and he's like, no, nah, it looks really real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's basically that. Yeah. But then he just wears an eye patch after that. It still looks cool, but. That was, that, was, that was a fun scene. It was a nice nice little romp there. I thought it was fun. In this between has very... the creepy, like, rapey vibe scenes. <laughs> yeah. If you take if you get rid of those, this has kind of, like, action adventure like, Jurassic Park mid-90s sorts of vibes. Especially because like, of the this, music. This like, very much yeah. looks like it's made in this time. Especially the music was, it's, like, really, like, like, I don't know, it was so weird to me in the opening because, like, the chaos is just fucking going on and, like, everybody's fighting each other. And I, I felt like like the script wanted it to be tense, but the music suggested it was supposed to be fun, you know? Yeah. And I got that vibe throughout a lot of the movie. Like, it was, it was a conflict between the score and the script. Because it's like, they're like, give me the most generic 90s orchestral music you can think of. Because this sounds like Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones, like, all mixed together. Yeah. Yeah. Back it's to not, the Future, like it's John. It's not John Williams, believe it or not. It's James Newton Howard that composed this. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, mm-hmm. I'm familiar. 
course. Yes. He has done many great works like... King Kong, The Dark Knight, I Am Legend, and more. Like, like I that name sounds really familiar, but I couldn't tell you like what he's done. I don't let's say he's not one of the composers that I'm like really familiar with uh, with outside of just yeah his name value. Okay, okay, but but speaking so so we're talking about like conflicting tones, uh, and also yeah I got we got way off of this, but but I was talking earlier about um yeah he yeets Enola into the water and then she can't swim and then later he's like I'll teach you how to swim. And there's like, it's like slow motion and like there's like nice piano music and he's like holding her up and teaching this little girl how to swim. And it's like felt, shape of water. It's it felt weird. very romantic. And I was like, she's 10. There's a <laughs> lot of weird ass scenes like that. Like when they yeah. happen upon that drifter guy. Like they just find like a random, like, I guess, oh, merchant yeah, I forgot out in the, about that. the middle of the ocean. The crackhead guy. Yeah, the crackhead guy. He looks like a methed up Elijah Wood. Yeah, Kinda. he's he's like Johnny Knoxville's character from Men in Black 2. <laughs> Had to pull that one out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks like Bam Margera now. Yeah, but like he had paper. Like he had like an Archie comic book or some shit in a jar. <laughs> he's like, look, I got paper. It's paper, man. And look, Amazing he, Fantasy 15. And then he's like, oh, well. Uh, Check out my Spawn comic. And they're trying to figure out what to trade for it. And Kevin Costner's like, oh, yeah, just bang these two. And the guy's like, oh, can I have the little one? And just, like, gets in this, like, really weird conversation for, like, 30 seconds. And you're like, oh, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. And then it's just, like, every so often. It's like this movie has action beats and fucking creepster beats, like, every few minutes. It's really weird. Action beats, creepster beats, and, like, fairly nice shots of the boat. Yeah, there, there's like a nice lot. wide shots of just the sprawling ocean, surprising, and then weird a rapey parts, shots. and then an action scene with like Pirates of the Caribbean music. And I don't know, like especially in the last like thirty minutes when they're on the Exxon ship, like there's a lot of just like brown and orange in this movie for something that takes place on the ocean. <laughs> yeah, it's really brown and orange and just muddy colors. It's gross. Yeah, as far as like just technically, like from a visual standpoint, it is really kind of a bore to look at. Yeah. And I, I could see some, like, shitty early CGI, but this is so early, I can't even, like, complain about it. Like, well, for yeah. 95, the fact that it exists at all... Well, granted, this had, like, an obscene budget, from what I understand, so I guess, yeah, they better have had something. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's not used as sparingly as something like Terminator 2, so it does stick out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, especially that one part, because there's another weird scene, not really a creepy scene, but she's like, where are we going to eat? We have no food. And then um, he's like, don't some worry. Fat. Yeah. Oh yeah. She like she's talking normal, but like but she's like get us this some. This is when the crackhead shows up. Yeah, and yeah, and they're like maybe we can trade with him, and he's like, I don't know, and she's like maybe we can get some, f and then she like yells food, and then it just cuts like yeah, right keeps, as she finishes the word. He's it's so looking weird. for resin. It's really funny. They're having such like a monotone conversation, and yeah, maybe we can get some food. Maybe get some food. <laughs> <laughs> But you we know were how, like, what the fuck? But you know how the mariner gets food? He, like, <laughs> attached himself to a fucking rope, yeeted himself out into the ocean, and, like, did some weird mutant call shit, I guess. And, like, a he giant... Like a call of the wild? Yeah, a giant sea monster came up and started attacking him, and then it just cut, and then they're f having, like, fish fillets on, like, a grill. Okay. okay. <laughs> he had his George Foreman grill that he lifted out of the ruins of whatever the fuck city. And, and that that brings me to to um one of my points is that like I don't know for a movie that takes place entirely on the ocean, I thought like marine life would play a bigger part in the script. But yeah, like that's the only time you see a fish in this movie is like this giant sea monster shows up for one second and then you don't even see how he kills it. It literally just cuts and they're eating it. Oh yeah, because well, the and, woman the the. Mommy tries to, like, fish at one point, and he's just like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, no, 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 let me show you. Yeah, and... and it's like, also, yeah, God forbid she do the most logical thing, yeah. you fucking asshole. At least well, let her try. There's one scene where it shows two sharks swim by. Like, so the whole thing is, like, she's wanting to... The mommy is wanting to go to dry land <laughs> because of the kid's tattoo. And they finally get where dry land is supposed to be, or where Mariner thinks it's supposed to be. And that's when you find out that he just goes to, like, I guess the shallowest point on the earth, quote-unquote. And he just fishes up dirt 
from like a, a city ruins. I guess. So the CG looks really bad while they're down there, mentioning the CG again. But like when they're up top, they left Enola on the boat and then like two sharks swim by and she's like, oh shit. And you think well, that the sharks are going to like have some kind of bearing like, oh man, is it going to attack them no, when the they're coming back up? Back well, up. But no. they literally just swim away and the sharks aren't shown again. I, I thought it was supposed to be like the fins <laughs> belong to like the smokers that were like doing something underwater. Cause, cause oh, yeah, really? like, I think what well, what made me think that is because like, yeah, you see the, the, the dorsal fins, but then later when they come back up, the smokers are just there. What is like scouts? Oh, I, okay. I guess. I don't that know. I didn't pick sense. up on that, but that does make a little bit more sense. I just thought they were trying to thought. imply that a shark ta- attack was going to happen like when they came back up or something. No, yeah. I think but it yeah. makes more sense for it to be like, yeah, I oh, guess scouting out. That the, the... further proves my point that the smokers are masters of stealth. <laughs> because they're able to have like some kind of weight pulley system to keep their jet skis underwater <laughs> and when they when they were ready to attack they just like I, I thought that I was thought, so awesome I thought that was really dumb at first but I don't know I saw more of it and I was like okay uh, <laughs> like, I, this I is awesome. like I kinda that's like, it. like Crash Bandicoot shit and I'm here for <laughs> it it totally is <laughs> So, like, there's some nuggets of it being an entertaining, good movie. There's some but there's, dino nuggies of, of good, yeah. good shit. There's just so many oh, weird Sorry, powers. before we get too far off it, I also just want to say, um, just like I thought it was weird how little the marine life was in this movie, I also thought it was weird that, like, the the climate and the weather was never an issue. Like, it's always, like, clear blue skies. Oh, that's true. There wasn't even, like, even a little storm in it. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, that's for, for how, like, fucking, that. how fucking relentless, like, storms can be out on the ocean, I thought that would come into play at some point, but nope, well, it's just nothing there, but clear skies. There's just no variance to the environment. I mean, I know it's just water, but, like, there's no <gasps> variance to the environment. Yeah. Like you're saying, there's also never any, like, nighttime shots either. There's one well, where they're, like, where they're, like, sailing past the moon. Oh, yeah. For, that's like, it. two seconds, where the moon is, like, weirdly close well yeah. question though i'm no i'm no scientist right? i'm not a big science man but if the world heated up enough to melt all the polar ice caps and the world's like a constant like warmer temperature like maybe 100 degrees would there be storms because isn't there storms because hot and cold air is converging and all that but if like if the earth is just a melting pot would there be storms i don't know i'm just i'm trying to inject logic so. into this movie but I, I have no idea. I don't know enough about storms and, and weather to, I to answer that. So. So we should look up some kind of like meteorologist analysis of Waterworld. <laughs> <laughs> meteorologist reacts listeners, to Waterworld with a really obnoxious, cunty thing. Listeners, if you are a, a weather person, if you're a meteorologist and you have seen Waterworld, please yeah, let us know. All the learned yes. scholars listening uh, to B-roll boys. Please call 1-800-B. <laughs> No, Let but I uh, IG us at B Roll Boys, and we'll uh, we'll we'll give give out some science facts. Yeah. Follow us on Pornhub. <laughs> That's our biggest channel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Pornhub. We had to become verified. Yeah. yeah, we had to show our dicks to get verified. <laughs> it's like a, a thumbprint, a dick print. Um, you know but, that reminds me. Speaking of <laughs> okay. dick prints, it, so like. In the beginning of the movie, because we were talking about what an asshole uh, Namor is at the <laughs> beginning, and like, yeah, he's just a straight up dick. But there's one point where like, uh, mommy like takes off her clothes and like offers herself to him as like a trade, and he's like, he's no, like, yeah. he's like, be gone, <laughs> thought, and and like later he, she's like, why? What was up with that? And he's like, she's like, I offered myself to you, and he's like, yeah, but you didn't really want to do it. And I'm like, fucking as much of an asshole as this guy's been. Like, he had no problem, like, trading a child for sex. And, like, but he's not cool with non-consensual yeah, he's, sex. Yeah, like, pushing them to the ground all the time and chopping their hair off and yeah. throwing the girl in the water. But he's like, oh, but no consent. That's important. Well, yeah, yeah. And then I'm she a starts, gentleman. Then she starts <laughs> kissing him while Enola has just been kidnapped. No, yeah, she has yeah, just been no kidnapped. Yeah, there's no fucking urgency there. It's like yeah. a Zelda game. Yeah, when we were talking about the sharks, not sharks, I guess that's when they popped up and took her. And then, yeah, they came back up. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, well, this is a good opportunity to oh, lay pipe. And, yeah, the reason they didn't give chase right away is because, like, they, they like, burned their boat. And what happened there... Which they still fuck on. Uh, yeah, and, but, you so know... So they, they could have done it in Titanic. They could, they could tell. <laughs> they could tell that the boat was about to get burned, so they're like, we gotta go underwater. And she's like, but I can't breathe. And he says... I'll breathe for you. Uh, and I was like, and we were all like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? And then, and then what, what that means, it turns out is he just like, you know, uses his gills and then, and then kisses her and, and breathes into her mouth. But yeah, what, somehow he breathes in through his gills underwater and is and able then, to push and then, air. And then, and then yeah, he, I guess, I guess when you breathe in water, you still exhale oxygen. 
Oh, wait, no, I think that's okay. true, actually. I think fish do exhale oxygen. So right now here. we need a marine biologist. I, I, so if you had gills in your neck... <laughs> No, I think that's true, actually. Man, is this one of those movies like Interstellar where they brought in like a team of nerds to try to like fact check every stupid fucking thing that they yeah. did in this to what? try to be like, well, it's actually scientifically accurate that a fish gill man can do this. So Waterworld <laughs> might be super scientifically accurate is what you're saying? We don't know. It I might mean, we're be. just rubes. At but... Neil deGrasse Tyson, let us know, please. <laughs> Oh god, his shtick got old really quickly. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I liked him for like five seconds, and then it was just him trying to lay epically pwn every single like science movie. He's like, well, actually, in gravity, the, the, the satellites wouldn't be that close. To I'm like, shut the fuck up, dude. Well, gravity so, sucks, so whatever. I mean, I don't think gravity's great or anything, but he's just kind of like, actually, virgins. And okay, since, since, we're on a, since we're on a side tangent, I remember when I was working at the theater when gravity was playing. And I, I hadn't seen it. I didn't really have an interest in seeing it, so it was whatever. But this lady walked out. I you know I was ushering, so I was like waiting outside of the trash can. And this lady walked out, and she was just like, uh, spoilers if you haven't seen Gravity. Um, this lady walked out, and she was like, Ugh, George Clooney dies. I want my money back. And I was like, <laughs> cool. I haven't seen it. I don't know why people think that if you work at the theater, you see every single movie that plays. It's not true. Have you seen it since then? No, I haven't. He I, dies pretty quick into it. No, actually. yeah, I know, I know. I just <laughs> I watched. Like it I said, I didn't really have much of yeah. That was the only movie I've ever seen where I thought it was fairly imperative that you watch it in 3D because watching it in 3D was pretty cool. But I can't imagine like sitting and watching it at home. Hmm. It's one of those where like the, the camera movement's supposed to be so kinetic and it kind of acts like a thrill ride a little you, bit. You know, I'm like that'll only work once and only in this environment, and I'll never watch it again. Do you guys have any movies that that you think are elevated by watching them in 3D? Gravity. Aside from that, <laughs> <laughs> um, that you like, you'd watch again. You know, most of the time I just don't notice it. Like if yeah. it's not annoying, and then it just kind of blends in for oh, me. Oh, aside from it, the obvious Spike Kids three. Sorry. Oh, true. Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Yeah. Well, that kind of shit's like made for 3D because Rodriguez just constantly has shit flying at the screen. I mean, well, like, they it's, needed it's a way an homage to, get to like all the 80s tickets. movies that do that. Yeah. But, like, I don't really have a good answer because I don't hate 3D. I, I hate 3D. I'll never go see a 3D <laughs> movie. I don't care. I hate it. it. It gives me a headache. I don't like it. Fine. I won't pay for it again, but I, I watched a couple or a decent few 3D movies. I, I guess, and this is going to be a controversial take, but. I think the first uh, like 3D movie I saw free at the theater while I was working there was Dread, and that was one of those where like during the slow motion scenes, I remember thinking this is going to be way more. These parts are going to be way more boring for me to watch at home, hmm. and that's totally true. But the rest of Dread kicks so much ass that I don't care. But I, I guess to answer your question, Dread and Gravity ish, and then the rest of them I kind of just don't notice it after a while. Yeah. Or if it's really bad, like I remember seeing one of the G.I. Joe movies in fucking theaters in 3D for my little stepbrother, and it gave me a headache. Man yeah. of Steel too. that one was like atrocious to watch in 3D. Yeah, mm. I've barely seen any movies in 3D, just because, yeah, mm. it gives me a headache I mean, and I don't really I mean, like I saw, oh, I saw Avatar in 3D when it came out, I remember that being pretty cool. Respect. But that was the first time I saw Avatar, and it kind of like degraded every single time I saw it after that. Because mm. I was like, oh, this is actually like a fairly pedestrian movie. But yeah. anyway. Cool. So, Waterworld. Yeah. Do you think Waterworld would be elevated by 3D? <laughs> oh my god, no. Exponentially. <laughs> I, 100% or 100% no. Yeah, on no. That. Um. See what 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 even happens? What there's just not enough. Of it? Like I said, there's not enough variance in the environments or in the shots. I don't actually don't think this is a badly shot movie. It's just that the set design is not terribly interesting because it can't really exist. Well, like yeah, they kind of wrote themselves into a corner. Well, that. yeah, but like we only have one single shot i think of them at night there's no weather like you were saying there's only a handful of times that they go underwater that's true and then like the shanty towns just look like every fucking 90s movie like this i mean i think we've seen multiple movies that look like this yeah i mean it pretty much looks like a borderlands like poor looks a lot town. like johnny mnemonic which i'd forgotten about until just now yeah yeah which looks a lot like Total Recall, which looks a lot like <laughs> yeah. Jurassic yeah. Park, which looks a lot like every one of these fucking movies. But, yeah. I mean, that also means... From that time period. Since they just had the ocean, that kind of gave them more room to be creative. They just chose not to. 
Could have made like maybe boat. they could have had bigger or more elaborate towns or I, th- I, I wonder know, more I wonder, interesting anyway. I wonder if the idea is to like make it so that when they finally reach dry land, it feels so refreshing because like you're just staring at nothing but like just the ocean. Whoops, uh, you're just staring at nothing but the ocean and fucking like brown and and orange. You know the boats and the people the whole time. And then finally they get to dry land and it's green. And I guess they wanted that to visually be like, oh, thank God. But, I don't, you know, it's like starving us to make us appreciate a meal, you know? <laughs> yeah. Which doesn't work for a two hour and 15 minute movie. Yeah, it's just clocking in at a little over two hours there. Felt a little long. I oh, mean, yeah, this make... movie drags ass. I don't know if we talked about the pacing, but this movie was way longer than it needed to be. I think it drags ass in the middle. The beginning and end are kind of oh, decently paced, but the middle, I was kind of like, okay, get on with it. Like when, yeah, I agree. When it was just the three of them on his boat, I was like, okay, let's go. They could have yeah. cut out like half of that, probably. Yeah. They could have cut out the weird, like, romantic shape of water scene where she's learning to swim, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess another thing that they could have done, maybe this would have kind of destroyed some of the aesthetic where he's supposed to be like a drifter nomad type, but the boat could have been bigger. So then we could actually have some like interior shots instead of just literally being out on the fucking water all day. I mean, it looks like they shot this on location. So that must have been a, at least it's authentic and B, it must have been miserable for the actors to shoot that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) So props to them for even being out there, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, I guess good thing. I'll say that um, I thought some of the the sets for like you know the, like the the floating shops and shit looked pretty pretty good actually, pretty well put together. Yeah, yeah. it has some decent shots throughout it. Like, yeah, this isn't the worst thing we've watched. It gave me it gave me mad Battlefield Earth vibes at first, but it's not that bad. Yeah, hey, I mean it's not like incompetent. I just think it's bloated and it's kind of especially towards the end the plot points kind of fall apart like. The whole dry land thing. I mean, it's a massive, like, continent of land, and somehow just nobody. Even though they have this plane, which doesn't seem like there's in short supply. <laughs> yeah. Like, at least a couple people have these planes or some sort of like aircraft, and no one has happened to cross this giant continent. And then, okay, I guess they're gonna settle here. What happens when all the adults die and that girl's just left there by herself? Yeah. And Kevin Costner fucks off. So yeah, he says, "I don't belong here. I belong out there." And they drop him off at the island alone, and then he leaves. It's like, but why? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. And I, I mean, they see, like, wild horses and all that, and so I guess that's fine. But it's just, again, the, the, it makes less sense the more you think about it. But while you're watching it, it's not horrible. I, I think it's a functional movie. It's just, it seems like it's kind of crushing under the weight of itself. Yeah. Where it's got such, like, lofty ideas, and you really get the impression that they're trying to make this a Jurassic Park like level franchise yeah. and they just couldn't because it's so drab for a lot of it and mm. the characters are so unlikable. That's that's another reason why they should have made uh the Mariner more like fun, like an actual enjoyable character to watch. Like he's worse than the bad guy. I think yeah. the, the bad guy is Deacon. He's like the the best part. Yeah, like <laughs> when the when Deacon kidnaps Enola, he's nicer to her than Kevin Costner is. Yeah, she even <laughs> says something about that. It's and like, it's yeah, like, he's yeah. a fucking asshole, but he's good. She's also like his perfect wing, or not wingman, um, hype like man. hype man. Yeah. Because every single time that they're talking about him, she's like, yeah, he'll kick your ass, bro. He's gonna fuck you up. <laughs> he got that coming. Yeah, she just <laughs> starts randomly talking about him like he's Rambo. My dad can kick your dad's up. ass. He's a, he can move in the shadows in broad daylight. This like, picture ain't got nothing. Yeah. Like, didn't you spend like three fuck days him with up. him where he just abused you and your not mother the whole That's time? That's what I'm saying. Like, like, like their why relationship. Why do they like him? Yeah, it came out of fucking nowhere, man. I was like, okay, I guess they're cool now. Yeah, it was cool all of a sudden considering like how long this movie is. Could have had more character development. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, but, I mean, aside from attacking the boat, getting the girl back, and finding the land, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah it's a pretty straightforward um, thing. Any, any action had, had scene? Had no business being two hours, 15 minutes. Yeah. Act Act two took forever. Yeah. It's, it's a really bad sign for a movie when the second act is the worst act. That should always be the best one, yeah. usually. Yeah, that's where you should be, like, that's the, establishing yeah, that's in the, the world and all that, yeah. <laughs> So the plot's going and you're like really developing these characters but i just got like nothing i mean even act me. one felt like it took a long time to, to wrap up like i, w- I want to say it was like 35 minutes 
I was yeah. intrigued enough by the premise to where I thought that Act One was okay. Huh. Like where we're yeah, just establishing, although it apes so much, so much from Mad Max that it that makes it a little bit less interesting. I agree. The just world, like the, the character archetypes, it's like yeah, yeah, you've seen this. The but, world building's almost there in the first act to yeah. like keep you hooked, and then the I, second act just blows it all out of the water. I feel like I say this every episode, but like the seeds of something cooler here. So oh, yeah, mm. like I don't, I, I think there's very few things that you can't make a good movie off the premise. You know, like. I don't know. God's not dead's pretty dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I don't think you can make that premise interesting to me. <laughs> yeah, it's true. What about the explosions? Oh my I god! Love, yeah. Every time there's an explosion, it's like fucking ten. Like each one is the, bigger yeah, than the last. These are yeah, dinky exactly. little like boats and jet skis, and it's like they're rigged with C4. They have these <laughs> enormous gas explosions. Like ginormous. Just and not even from like getting detonated in some way. It's like one boat just runs into a gate and explodes and you're like, like really even slow that? too. I, I love that part because it's like the pyrotechnic guy did it a little too late because <laughs> it like it like shows it going up to the wall, slowing down, then bumping into it and then exploding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great and it seemed like it was only going like 20 miles an hour it wasn't yeah. even that fast and yeah, then the yeah. explosions are like 150 feet tall yeah. <laughs> so that's one kind of funny thing about it but yeah that, that was more of like an amusing thing than a oh this broke my immersion yeah i mean the action scenes were mostly hype you know like it did borrow a lot from mad max this is basically no uh, yeah. road warrior specifically on water i, I think yeah. if, if it if it weren't for the pacing this would be like a cheesy enough movie to be to be fun for me to watch and i wish kevin costner matched deacon's cheesiness yeah yeah he plays yeah. very straight i feel like if they had made him a little bit more likable and made this a little bit more fun this could have been and then also shaved like I don't know, 45 minutes off the runtime. This could have been like a Tremors level. Yeah, it could have been the totally. 90s Yore. Totally. Yeah. If they, imagine if Yore was the Mariner. I, how I, much better this would be? <laughs> Dude, the movie would have been over in 40 well, how minutes. Many, uh, how many movies are not improved by making Yore the main character? <laughs> <That's true. laughs> I want to see Yore in the Matrix. Passion of the Christ would be infinitely better with Yore. <laughs> yeah, except with Yore, they would try to like torture him and like it would just break off his skin. <laughs> Yor has a very he just like flexes through the high. cross, <laughs> <laughs> flexes his way off the cross. Anyway, what would you give this? I give it a five. Um, I'd say it's it's a little better than a lot of the average shit we've watched. I'll give her a six. Really? Yeah, because yeah. What, what would you give it? Um, I'm gonna barely give it a four, just because two hours and fifty minutes was way too long. That's fair, but like I guess my good thing would just be. I really like the idea of it. Like they could have made this pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. I the like world, the world, world building was all right. It's just that they just kind of, oh, th threw a foul ball or something. <laughs> like, like it, everything was there, and then they just fucking dropped the ball. There's just too much bullshit to it, but the core of something cooler is there. Yeah, I got it. If you will, the premise was an ocean, but the execution was a puddle. Yes. <gasps> That is correct. Got him. Bam. No, get, please. Hold, hold your snaps. Get dunked on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay. <laughs> Got a haunted well, house here. Anyway, so uh, as, uh, as interesting as this movie was, I know we got some interesting trivia. The trivia. Here we go. Um, you actually told me There's about this part of the movie. There's water in this. What? Like there's like there's like a lot, a of lot water. of water, a lot of what? water. That's all the trivia. We got. <laughs> no. Uh, so so Wes told me before the movie that um that uh somebody actually there was like a fan edit of this movie that added like forty minutes worth of shit, which fuck that. But apparently it's better and it's the preferred version. But I don't know. Is this like a cult classic? Because I I don't think there's enough to latch onto here to be like. Well, apparently what happened. <laughs> is they aired a TV version of it that added a bunch more shit. Like they decided to do like I guess like a mini series version almost. A Snyder but cut. But they cut out like some of the violence and some of like the the more hype action scenes. So apparently a fan, quote unquote, took all the cuts of the movie available and recut it 
And I guess whoever was in charge of this liked it so much, they started distributing that as like a special edition. I wonder if he That's not paid. the one we watched. And I don't know where we could have obtained that, but I wouldn't mind checking it out. It's Probably like developers officially releasing mods for games. Yeah. It's like Bethesda being like, yeah, we know our games are garbage, so here, go and mod Skyrim. Makes it more fun. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. So apparently that version's better. And Fuck that. I'm not watching that. I would, I would check it out. I don't like that runtime because I feel like yeah. the, what would make this better would be to cut a lot of shit out. Yeah. Like, I don't need but, this bloated even more. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It's rumored that director Kevin Reynolds and Kevin Costner had a huge squabble over the film, resulting in Reynolds walking off the project and leaving Costner to take over directing and oversee editing. Reynolds was quoted as saying that Kevin Costner should only star in movies he directs. That way, he can work with his favorite actor and favorite director. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> fucking burn so that answers my i remember asking at the beginning like is this one of those deals where there were some creative disputes or like mm-hmm. multiple writers because it feels that's usually what happens with these yeah. movies that have such a massive scope unless there's like a rock solid team like the lord of the rings or like the avatar yeah where everyone's just super into it yeah where, where it's like so extensively planned not that this wasn't planned every movie takes planning but like lord of the rings had like three years of pre-production and as far as i know the team for that was pretty rock solid so that's why there was like one consistent vision for everything where this just feels like you're painting with a bunch of different colors without any real that's why it just seems to shift around so much tonally yeah Yeah. especially kevin costner's character like that's surprising they had like such a difference between that because like his performance is so fucking weak. It's really flat. Like, it, yeah. it almost sounds like There's he's trying to, to do that, like, every accent thing, like, from Battlefield <laughs> Earth. Because, like, I, he sounds weird, you know what I mean? He, like, he says shit weird, and it's just kind of jarring. Well, and they're, like, the little the language that they're speaking, I noticed in the subtitles it said Greek. <laughs> yeah. Nice so. touch. <laughs> is this the After Earth thing where we're going to, like pretend like we have some oh this is what the dialect would actually naturally progress to in the future fuck off yeah and then it just sounds like a weird accent at least in this it wasn't as obnoxious and after earth i noticed it the whole time yeah true but here i kind of just it was more noticeable in the the beginning and then it just kind of leveled off yeah i guess i got bored uh like you said uh this was um Prior to Titanic, this was the most expensive movie ever produced, and Kevin Costner personally invested $22 million of his own uh, money into the film. Man. He really had a vision for this. Yeah. Huh? Uh, was... If he took over directing, yeah. I guess glad, so. glad it worked out. I, I guess, yeah. I think to answer your question of whether this is like a cult classic, I don't know if it's a cult classic. I've never heard of it. So the war... I don't think it's to the degree of like The Room or Troll 2, where like everyone knows it's garbage. It's kind of like... I think this was hyped up so much and then it was kind of lukewarm and because of that everybody started saying that it was garbage and then people would watch and be like actually it's not though because i personally enjoy it and yeah. so that kind of it's a I don't weird know how, a cult yeah. maybe it's okay i guess response <laughs> it's not good enough to be a cult classic but not bad enough to gain the infamy that it did yeah it's, it's just kind of like an Ooh. average movie it's the worst kind of bad and then it's boring so well, Kevin Costner stayed in an oceanfront villa that was super swanky and all, all luxuried out, uh, but crew members were forced to live in uninsulated condominiums that were subject to temperature swings of up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So, uh, oh, yeah. you know, I guess that's where the 22 million went. Almost, <laughs> almost all of this trivia is just Kevin Costner is just kind of an asshole. So I'm, sensing, <laughs> I'm sensing a theme here. Yeah. I haven't noticed him in much stuff lately. So. Trivia number four. He actively beat the cameraman. <laughs> Joss Whedon flew out to the set to do last minute rewrites on the script's third act about, uh, sorry, aboard the smoker's ship. The D's. Oh yeah, the ship's called the D's, by the D's. way. D's. Yes, the D's nuts, if you will. Sorry, I had to. Um, he later described it as, quote, seven weeks of hell, stating that he did little more than taking notes from Kevin Costner and trying to work them in the script because nobody listened to his ideas. In the end, he wrote a few puns and a few scenes that I can't even sit through because they came out so bad. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Sorry, Joss. <laughs> yeah. They should have caught him a few years later. Because, I mean, at this point, he only had, like, his Alien 4 pull. 
<laughs> and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> How old is Joss Whedon? For um, some reason, I thought he was like a younger guy. But if he's working on this, then he's a little bit older. Th- this was like his like first shit. Because I think the first thing he did was Buffy the Vampire Slayer the movie in like 93 or 4. Okay. <laughs> so he's probably like 15 years older than we are. Kevin Costner demanded the VFX crew hide his receding hairline digitally, which was not a cheap feat in 1995. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't notice. Don't wear a fucking wig. I, I mean, I did. I noticed His hair is very noticeably thinning. I thought that was kind of the point. No, I mean, I didn't notice the them cleaning it up. With, yeah. the, with the VFX. I didn't notice that either. Yeah. It must have been very minor because like you you could notice uh, his hair, like his hairline receding. In oh, it. I thought you were saying that he wanted that and they couldn't do it. Uh, he It says he he demanded that they did that. So I'm assuming I they did it. I couldn't even tell how. I would like to see a before and after. Holy shit. The script went through 36 different drafts. It with shows six different writers. It shows original writer had already written seven drafts before he was replaced. Damn. The fuck, man! Like with such a simple premise, <laughs> why does it need all these rewrites? Yeah, they're not writing the fucking Iliad here. <laughs> oh, this one's from Neil Neil Tyson. If the ice caps melted, the oceans would only rise a few hundred feet, not enough to flood civilization into a floating oblivion. Writer Excellent. Peter Rader was aware of this, but decided to ignore this fact to make the premise more intriguing. I can appreciate that. Thanks, Neil. I needed. I really needed to know that. You are, in fact, smarter than the people that wrote this dumb movie. Um, yeah. actually... <laughs> so, there's no more interesting trivia. You're looking through the whole thing, and uh, there's just nothing. I'm, I'm like, I'm uh, glancing through it, and nothing really seems that. All right. Hey, did you enjoy all that trivia, kids? Uh, <laughs> awesome. That was not hidden by clever editing. <laughs> well, that was Waterworld. Uh, summer's not over yet. What we watch next week... Next week we are watching Benchwarmers. <laughs> so you you fucking love Adam Sandler and Happy Madison. Justin that, Adam Sandler. I'm probably Adam more Sandler boy. I Sandler think I'm boy, more attached Sandler boy. Up to Benchwarmers than I am to any of the other movies of his that I've seen. And he's not even in it. I'm sure this is gonna hold up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is gonna be a classic. It's this and Grandma's Boy. Those are the Happy Madison movies that I like the most. I guess this one's the most summer. Yeah, because it takes place outside, which we never go to. That's so. true. <laughs> outside, scary and bad. <laughs> All right. Well. All right. We'll see you for join bench us warmers. next week for Benchwarmers. Come sail away. Come sail away. Come sail away with me. Come sail away. Come sail away. Come sail away with me. Holy fuck. Finn. Come sail away. That's it. What, we some kind of... B-roll boys. 